number 473. these uh, 
special days like this, I, I know Hallmark cards had something to do with it, so they'd sell more cards for all of these, these different holidays. But you know, over the years I've noticed that if there wasn't a day designated to honor whatever or whoever, we probably wouldn't give much honor at all to whomever and for whatever. We just wouldn't think about it. For some reason, as a whole, I think most of us are, are, are not comfortable with giving praise, honor, compliments, or saying I love you to someone. Uh, it's harder for some than others uh, to express those personal feelings of relationship and, and, and care for parents and spouses and, and children and friends. I know that was the case for my dad. He was older, and, and it was hard for him to express this love to his children. We just, just didn't get what I really thought I needed and wanted. And so in my life, I've tried to make sure I've changed that. I wanted to express the love, care, concern within my family. Because all too often we're too busy many times, we tend to be too busy many times to, to not put those first things first. We're always running around wanting to do and take care of things that are, are really a lot less important. The Bible in thir uh, Romans 13, 17 admonish uh, admonishes us to give honor to whom honor is due. And so today is Father's Day that's been designated. We will give honor to fathers. It's also the first day of the week that we give honor to God because in Acts 20 and verse 7 and 1 Corinthians 16, 2 has been mentioned, we see this first day of the week set aside for us to come together to honor God. Yes, we come together to remember Christ as we've done with our sharing of communion. We come together to encourage each other, which we've done already before worship service and will continue to do the rest of this morning. But we come together to worship and to honor God as well. And I encourage you to get your mind right. Quit thinking about lunch. Quit thinking about what you're going to do this afternoon. Let's honor God. Many times honor is only given when someone compels another person to do so. Whether it's husbands, wives, children, elders, church members, uh, church member with church member, employers, employees, or even to God himself. It's like taboo or something, you know. It, it, it's like no one is ever worthy enough to compliment or praise or honor or that giving appreciation is a sign of weakness or to say I love you is sissy or mushy or, or you know something like that or it's beneath one's dignity to tell someone hey I appreciate you shame on us shame on us how terrible it would be or is for an individual who expresses no personal care, concern, and honor for those around him or for our God. Or for our God. Now, men, I think it's a harder time for us. We struggle with this more than our ladies struggle with it. You know, it's harder for us men to say, I love you, I appreciate you, I thank you, I will honor you. I don't know, it's just something built within us as men. Guys, we've got to break that and get into that habit of giving honor to our spouses, to the ones around us, to our family members, to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We've got to show that honor. And I am, I, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I've got a, a, a lady who has supported me, special lady, for the past 46 years. If you add the four years we dated, come July the 16th next month, we will have been together 50 years. 50 years. 
and she has never failed to love me or honor me. I admit sometimes I have failed, but she hasn't. She hasn't. So happy anniversary, Peg, one month. Her. It had been very difficult for me to be a father without her help. Very impossible for me to have been a Christian father without her, her help. And I give thanks to her and I give thanks to God today. Collectively, we are here to say, Father, I love you. Father, I thank you. Father, I give you praise and I give you honor. We're here to tell Jesus how much we love him. We're here to bring our offerings before him, to make our sacrifices uh, before him. We're, we're here to, to sing and to, to pray and to read from his word and to hear messages from his word. You see, these are the sacrifices we bring to God. And we pray that he accepts these sacrifices and calls them a, a, a sweet aroma as he does in Leviticus. It's our duty this morning to present these offerings in a way acceptable to him. And we pray that he accepts it this morning. As we continue our thought this morning, call your attention to Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let that sink in for just a minute. We all understand that to be the creator God. The creator of the universe and everything that's in it. Yes, God the Almighty. God created. Compare that to Matthew 6, 9. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now the words God and Father in these two verses both apply to the same God. But are actually different words in Hebrew and Greek to fit the right characteristic that's being described at that time. This is apparent even in the English translation. I believe we can all agree that Father in Matthew has more of a personal touch, personal ring to it, personal relationship attachment to it than God, the word God, in Genesis 1-1. Well, it's supposed to. It's supposed to. There are many different names for God that's used uh, in the Bible. <clears throat> For instance, Psalm 9-2 says this, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. O Most High is El Elyon, which means this, God who is the sovereign ruler, a characteristic of God. Then in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's Jehovah Roi, which means God who provides my care and provision. Now, any Bible student knows the importance that God attaches to names. It's very important. God has changed the names of individuals before to better describe what he wants them to become. We, we all know about Abram and Sarah and Jacob and Simon, Peter. In the New Testament, there's a couple of names I want to point out to you. Theos, translated the God. Kyrios, translated Lord. Pate, translates Father. And, from, and the, the last one this morning that was in our Bible reading, Abba Pate, dearest Father. Dearest Father. Now the term dearest Father denotes the tender endearment, stressing God's loving care in the parent-child relationship, the father-son relationship. That's the significance with Abba, Father. And since today is Father's Day, I want us to consider that Abba Pate 
our dearest Father. In the New Testament, it's only used three times. Three times. Matthew 14, 36, when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays, Abba, Father. Everything is possible with you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Notice the close personal relationship. Jesus is praying to his Father and asking for personal things. Dearest Father, it's a deep, emotional father-son discussion. Prayer. Second time is Galatians 4, 6. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. Again, notice the outright proclamation. We are his sons. That father-child relationship is established here. And as a father, he gives the child assistance. And the last one, our uh, Bible reading, Romans 8, 15 to 17. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption as sonship. And we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. God has given us this relationship as we render obedience to him. Look at Matthew 12, 46. <clears throat> this point is, is driven home here by Jesus himself Matthew 12, 46. While he was still speaking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brothers were standing outside seeking to speak to him. And someone said to him, Behold, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak to you. But he answered the one who was telling him and said, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my mother. He, he is my brother and sister and mother. We are God's children. And as Christians, I believe too often, we do not seem to live our lives as if we were brothers and sisters to Christ. We do not live our lives many times believing that God is our Father. This point is not emphasized enough to us within our own lives. It's not emphasized enough to us within our children's lives. We've got to understand that we have a special relationship upon our obedience that God looks upon us as his children. Now think about that. Believe me, if you were an heir to, to uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg's fortune or Bill Gates's fortune, believe me, you would remember that every day. You would dream about that. Your mind would always be on that. Why can't we understand that we have a better inheritance because we are the children of God. We do. And as such, we have to live our lives accordingly. We belong to God. God is our Father, and we can call him Abba Father, dearest Father. And God wants us to have that relationship with him. Too often, I think, when we say God, we think of this, 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 this supreme being sitting in the clouds somewhere, looking down at us. Why do we seem to fail in approaching God as Abba Father? Because I believe we approach him in other ways 
as God, but I'm not so sure as much with the Abba Father, the father-son relationship. Well, one of the reasons, I think, is because we've been desensitized by the world. We live in the world, and we've been desensitized to it. It's possible we never understood the father-son relationship to begin with. Or maybe it's our living life that has hardened us into having this personal relationship with God because it has been hard for us to have a personal relationship individual to individual. Have you noticed within our society today many have lost the ability to respect and honor just about anything? Just about anything. You know, we can not only failing to honor God, we know that, everything going on, we can see that very clearly. It's, it, it, we, we can also see uh, failing to honor our country, our flag, our, our armed forces, our law enforcement, uh, failing to, to honor our, our veterans, uh, failing to honor other people, other people's rights, other people's property. The failure to honor has been thrown out. Why? Because God has been thrown out. And we as God's people ha have all but thrown out the Abba Father relationship with him because we so often allow so many other things to come between us and Abba Father. We have got to get our priorities straight. We've got to understand we have the relationship with God that no one else has. No one else has. And we will not come to appreciate the honor, love, and respect for others or any of those other things until we first establish that relationship with God our Father. If we love and honor God, then we will love and honor those around us and those things that are important. Let's consider quickly why we should. Romans 5, 8 tells us, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. A couple of pages over. Romans 8, 32. He who did, did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Because of this love to sacrifice his own son, we should be willing to honor God. And we should be willing to honor God. I think it can be summed up. Let's, uh, let's turn to Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37. Summed up very nicely. How do we honor God as our Father? Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? And he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment, whether it's in the Old Testament or the New Testament. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Now, this is not providing lip service. This is not just sitting in a church pew. This is just not having good intentions. This is just not throwing money in the collection plate. If you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, if you establish that Abba Father relationship with him, we will be giving God the honor. We will be giving his son honor. We will be giving the church honor. We will be giving his holy word honor. And it has to be with a committed, vibrant Obedient love. That's 
how we honor God. And I appeal to you as we close this morning upon this first day of the week. Upon this day that society is designated Father's Day, that you honor God by actually making him your father through your obedience, by committing to establishing that Abba Father relationship with him if you don't have it, or by restoring your obedience to him that you once had. Hebrews 5a tells us, although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The crowd hollers, what shall we do? Peter answers in Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Sometime during, after that happened, I'm sure some of those individuals who were baptized fell away, and then they wondered what to do. 1 John 1.9 tells us, if we confess our sins one to another, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us for any reason we can help you to